This is the second of two videos about routing and automating contact in FL Studio. In the first video, I explain how to set up contact so that you can have several instruments loaded into one instance of contact and have those instruments directed into separate channels in the mixer so that you can apply different effects to them. In the present video, I'll explain how to automate the different parameters of the instruments, such as their velocity and panning. Because the instruments that are loaded into contact are not native FL Studio instruments, the procedure for creating automation clips for them is a little different and it can be confusing. Hence the current video. As I mentioned in the previous video, there is a free version of contact available. It's called Contact Player. And again, I'll put a link to this in the description in case you want to download it and give it a try. I'll just open Contact then. Close the channel settings window and select detach so that contact stays on top of the other windows. I've got three instruments loaded into an instance of contact here as demonstrated in the previous video. There's a string patch from Symphobia and violas and double basses from the contact factory library. I'll start off by playing through the short phrase I've got here so that you can hear what it sounds like. We'll begin by adding some automation to the viola ensemble. In particular, I'll automate this chord knob here, so that in the second half of the phrase, the violas play in thirds. Since they'll be playing in thirds, we need to set the key and the scale. The phrase is in F sharp minor, so we change the key to G flat, and the scale to minor. Now, how to automate the chord knob? Well, to do this, we left-click the Options menu up here in the top left corner of Contact and select Browse Parameters. You'll see that a list appears in the browser that lists a number of parameters that we can automate for both the violas and the double basses. To automate the chord knob for the violas, we locate it in the list, right-click it, and select Create Automation Clip. And you'll see that an automation clip has been placed in the playlist and also in the channel window. The first thing I do whenever I create an automation clip is put it under the MIDI or audio clip to which it applies. I do this so that when a project becomes more complicated, I'm not wondering which automation clips apply to which MIDI and audio clips. If you prefer, you can place the automation clip on top of a MIDI or audio clip in the playlist. But I find it easier to see what's going on if the automation clips are visible on their own playlist track. Note that you can move tracks up and down in the playlist by hovering your cursor over the name of the track, holding down Shift and using the mouse wheel. I also do the same thing in the channel window. Note that you move channels up and down in the channel window by holding down ALT and using the keyboard arrows. Another point worth noting, if you find you need to adjust the volume of an instrument, you might find that you can't do this on the instrument interface. If I change the volume of the violas here on the interface, for example, you'll see that when I hit play, it springs back to its default volume. The way to change the volume is either via the mixer in contact, via the FL Studio mixer, or via the volume knobs in the channel window. Back to our automation clip. To get the violas to play in thirds in the second part of the phrase, we need to place a couple of control points at the beginning of the second bar.
You'll see that as I move the control point up and down, the chord knob changes. For our purposes, we need to leave it at the level where thirds are showing. Now when we play the phrase, we should hear the violist play in thirds in the second bar. And if you look at the control knob, you'll see it changes at the beginning of the second bar. Sometimes a knob that can be automated doesn't show up in the browser window because not all of the knobs are pre-configured. For example, the random pitch knob here doesn't appear in the browser window. The way to automate a knob that doesn't appear in the browser is to open the Auto tab, left click on a MIDI channel that hasn't been assigned, drag it to the relevant knob, drop it, and it should show up in the browser window. You can then just automate it in the normal way. We won't be automating the pitch knob, so we can remove the assignment down here. Finally, I'll show you how to apply automation to the Symphobia patch using the mod wheel on your MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller. And again, you can apply this to other plugins apart from Contact. The particular Symphobia patch that I've chosen is Sustain Vibrato DXF. DXF standing for Dynamic Crossfade. This has several velocity layers that can be employed using the mod wheel. We'll use it to get that nice swelling effect from the strings at the end of each chord. I'll solo the Symphobia strings so that you can hear what they sound like. You can notice that there's already some of that swelling effect, but with a little automation we can make it even more pronounced. The first thing we do is open Browse Parameters again. Now it looks like there are no MIDI assignments for any of the Symphobia parameters, but they're right down the bottom of the list here. You can see that the second one down is the mod wheel. We right click on this and select link to controller. And you'll see that this little window opens. We just change the port to zero and confirm that the channel is one because it's the Symphobia patch that we want to automate. Then you simply move the mod wheel on your keyboard or MIDI controller and the link will be established automatically. If you look down here, you'll see that I can now control the mod wheel on the contact interface with the mod wheel on my MIDI controller. I'll play the Symphobia strings again and use the mod wheel on my keyboard to control the mod wheel on contact's virtual instrument. So how do we automate the mod wheel? Well we have three options at this point. First we could play the phrase and record our movements of the mod wheel in real time. Second we could draw in an automation curve freehand in the piano roll. Or third we can create an automation clip as we did with the violas. I find the first two options a bit finicky so we'll create an automation clip like before. First we open up the browser list again. Right click on the mod wheel automation and this time select create automation clip. You can see that we now have a new automation clip in the playlist 
and in the channel window. Before doing anything else, we'll put these in their correct positions. Now I'll just quickly add some automation to the clip. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, that's about it. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave a comment.